This is project 21 of Hacking with Swift. We're going to tackle something really easy here called local notifications. You'd be extremely relieved, I'm sure, to hear how easy they are. They let you set reminders on the user's lock screen to show them information even when your app isn't running, which makes them perfect for things like, say, calendars or reminders to use your app. For more information, see the website hackingwithswift.com. There you can buy this video and all videos in glorious high resolution or as downloadable ebooks starting from just $3 each. Super cheap, but your support is so appreciated because it lets me make more videos like this one. You can also find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. If you have problems, feedback, suggestions, and so on, follow me, get in touch. I'll do my best to help you. So go ahead and launch Xcode. Then choose create a new project, choose iOS application single view application, and give it a sensible name. I'll choose project 21. Make sure it's a language Swift and for device, uh, iPhone's fine. It really does not matter. Our UI is so simple in this one. Press next, then create somewhere. Okay, we'll start with our very basic UI. So open up main.storyboard within interface builder and search for a button. We'll have two buttons, one to ask permission to show notifications and one to actually show one. So the first one, let's make it nice and big and have the title schedule, 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 whatever you choose, of course. And actually, I'll just hold down alt and drag off that to duplicate it and call this one, uh, actually the first one, register. There we go. So we've got register and schedule. I'll move this to the, the sort of top left corner of the screen because I'm not going to do any auto layout here. I just want to show it in the screen so people can tap on the buttons. And then I'll create two actions from these to trigger stuff. So I'll say down here, register, control, drag, choose action, and then call this register tapped. And the second one, same thing, control, drag, choose action, and this is called schedule tapped, boom. So registering and scheduling are different things. This is new in iOS 8. Uh, this is an iOS 8 course. Uh, and it's important because before iOS 8, apps could show local notifications whenever they wanted, uh, which was you know, a great way to say, re remind folks to use apps, but had the possibility of being abused because people could sort of harass users with notifications very easily and make them delete the app that came to it. As of iOS 8 onwards, you must ask for permission to show notifications to users. Uh, and you ask for the permissions you care about. We're going to ask for alert, i.e. showing messages on the lock screen, a badge to show numbers on our icon if we choose to, and sound, because, you know, users just love beeping sounds when they're busy uh, in the office. Uh, and once you do this, you just say, hey, iOS, here are the things I want to show. Is this okay? And it will automatically show a message to the user saying, this app wants to show you messages. Are you sure you want to let it do so? If that is yes, then you can go ahead and schedule stuff later. Uh, one thing we're not going to cover here, by the way, is push messaging. These are remote messages sent, you know, for information like, you know, hey, someone commented on your Facebook post, whatever. They're triggered remotely, and they do require an external service like either your own server or Urban Airship or PushWizard.com. Someone like that must do that, so it's very much outside the remit of this uh, course. Local notifications, though, are perfect for this course. So inside Register Tapped, uh, we have to tell iOS what notification settings we want. So we'll say let notification settings equals UI user notification settings. And with the initializer four types, we're going to specify dot alert, i.e. pop-up messages, then a pipe to mean combine with dot badge, then combine with dot sound. So you want to be able to play, play sounds, change the badge, and a, a number of other icon that is, and show alerts. We'll actually only use alerts here, but you can improve this later on. Categories nil, we don't care about that. And then we ask uh, iOS to uh, pass this request onto users. So we'll say UI application dot shared application, then register user notification settings. Just pass it that object, notification settings like that, boom. And that's all it takes. That will take iOS will then ask the user, is this okay? Now in the future, if the, if the user says yes, uh, this won't be asked again. This this requests permission to do so, and it will be silently granted automatically by iOS because it knows the user says it's okay. Um, I would say, actually, when you are testing this, you will need to uh, reset the simulator a few times. So if we run this back now, I'll, I'll change to iPhone 5S simulator and press play. 
you'll see this work with our, my amazing uh, user interface here. Which I'll actually close and go back to the storyboard, the controller, because it's much easier. There we go. Uh, there's our UI. I'll press register, which triggers these two line of codes. And you'll see, boom, lights and notifications. Allow or don't allow. Now, if you want to do testing later on, it's important to be able to reset the simulator to re-trigger that message. So you can just go to iOS simulator, reset, and press reset. And it blanks it completely, deleting all the apps, deleting any configuration. So you press run again, it'll ask again the same question. So register, boom. So you can test allow and don't allow freely um, just to make sure it all works correctly. So that's registering done. That, it, that's it. Those two lines of code are all it takes to uh, check if we're allowed to send messages or not. So once we have uh, permission to do stuff, we're going to fill in this schedule tapped method with an actual send. Uh, and this is done using uh, a few lines of code. First up, we have to specify a fire date. When do you want this message to appear? So if you're doing a, you know, a calendar, you might say on the time that you just specified. Or if you're doing one of those nag games, um, like um, you know your lives are recharged, then you'll just say, you know, take time to recharge lives times the number of lives missing equals your fire date. Um, so to do that, in, in here, we're going to say uh, let notification equals UI user, I'm uh, sorry, UI local notification, like that. That creates a local notification. And um, we'll give it a fire date. I'm going to do notification.firedate equals ns date, that's date type where it specifies fire, date, fire dates, and we'll do time interval since now five, i.e. five seconds from now, to show this uh, notification. Then I'll say notification dot alert body, what to show in the message, and I'll do, hey you, yeah you, swipe me please, like that. This is the message to show inside the uh, uh, notification. There is no title by the way, the title by default is your app's name as an icon under the icon. Uh, so you can also specify uh, an alert action which completes the sentence swipe to blur. So it'll be swipe to unlock, swipe to read, swipe to play, swipe to recharge, swipe to spend money with us for the in-app purchase, who knows. Uh, I'm going to say alert action equals be awesome. So I'll say swipe to be awesome. I would say this text is very, very hard to read on many iOS screens because it's, it's a very faint color against potentially a black background. So um, it's hard to read. So don't get too fussy about it. Then we'll give it a sound name. This can either be a sound inside your project without the file extension, um, or it can be UI local notification default sound name, which is whatever users have asked the, the notifications to be. Uh, and usually you want to fall in line with that. Uh, often if I see uh, an app with a custom sound name, I turn sounds off because it can be quite harassing. There's a particular racing game I shall not mention that has like a revving, roaring car sound that actually makes me jump when it plays. Um, so please don't do that. Um, that's the sound name. And you can also do something really cool here, which is to attach custom information to your not notification. This can be anything you can hold in a dictionary. And iOS really doesn't care what it is. It just stores it away and will pass it back to you when the user unlocks the device with this notification. So we can say notification.userinfo equals, and I'll pass a dictionary with a square bracket, quote, custom field one, colon, oops, quote colon even, is woot, so some value. You can call this hello name or whatever you like. You can put any data you want in here as long as it's data that uh, is just dictionary safe. Then we'll say UI application dot shared application dot schedule local notification uh, and we'll pass in that notification. Boom. And that will uh, that will in five seconds show that message to users. So we're, we're passing in uh, the text to show, the text to complete swipe to as a sentence, uh, play the default user selected sound and uh, show uh, sorry store some information that we'll unlock and read later on so let's go ahead and play this make sure you have pressed register at least once it's silent for me now because I've done it before uh, then press schedule then press command L this triggers a lock in the simulator and you'll see after five seconds boom that pops up Project 21, my app name. Hey you, yeah, yes, yeah, swipe me, please, great. And then really faintly here, slide to be awesome. It's super faint. 
Um, but that's okay. So don't don't get frustrated too much about completing the sentence because it is really faint. Anyway, swipe to unlock. It will launch our app and and pass in the information we asked for, which was the user info. Uh, so that's the basic way of showing notifications, but it causes a problem. Now this is where you want to start resetting the simulator because it lets you test things more easily. So I'll reset the simulator again and press reset. Give it a second to clear all again back to factory default iPhone. Great. Then press play. I'll press register once. Then press don't allow. This user does not want to let uh, our app to show notifications. Then I press schedule. Now, nothing will happen. Of course, I can go to the lock screen and nothing will happen. But you're seeing this big error message here complaining. We're trying to show a notification, uh, but the user has not allowed it. There you go. We haven't received any permission from the user to do so, so it's not allowed to do that. Um, so this is a problem. And the, the solution is just to check beforehand, before we try and um, schedule anything, just to check what's going on. So we can say uh, at the top of that method, we'll say uh, let settings equals UI application dot shared application dot current user notification settings. And this will tell us, have we got permission or not to show stuff? So if the user said no, I don't want to give you the access to you know alerts and badges and sounds and so forth, then you can say if settings dot types equals dot none, do something. I.e. this cannot happen. So I'll return at that point. If they've said no, I cannot allow uh, notifications, then bail out. You could also show something useful in there. So if a user does try and uh, re request a local notification when it hasn't actually been granted, then maybe they, they said they said no, you know, three or four weeks ago or months ago, and don't remember they said no. You can show some information here. So we'll say let AC equals UI alert controller with the title can't oops quote can't schedule then message. Either we don't have, oops, don't have permission to schedule, oops, Daisy, permission to schedule notifications, or we haven't, or we haven't asked yet, like that. Boom. Preferred style is dot alerts, like that, and then say ac dot add action, ui alert action, with the title okay, style default, handler nil, do nothing. Present view controller, AC, and with true, completion nil. This is old stuff to you. So that's just showing a little warning message to make the whole thing more useful. So that is how the, the, you should correctly schedule and register for local notifications. The next step is slightly more challenging because what we want to do is be able to tell when the user has launched our app as a result of unlocking using one of our notifications. So if we're showing like, hey, you've got a new email or this friend request came in or whatever it happens to be, we want to take them straight to that friend request. And that means reading in this user info field. This is not hard, uh, but it is done twice. You need to do it twice because uh, there are two ways it can be called. Firstly, it can be called when your app is not running. So your app is literally being launched uh, from, from, from the lock screen when it was dead, you know, days, hours ago, who knows. Second option is the app was running but was backgrounded and is being triggered as a result of uh, the notification being unlocked or tapped on, but the app was still running anyway. Uh, so to do this, both these things are handled inside the app delegate, things that happen to your application. Uh, and the first one is this major method here, which we've used a couple of times now. And it's called application did finish launching with options. And you'll see options is provided as NS object any object, so basically anything ever. Uh, and in there will be a particular key that is very long. I'll read it out to you. It is UI application launch options local notification key. It's very descriptive. Thank you, Apple. Uh, if that exists, it will contain a UI local notification object. So we have to try and uh, unwrap it very, very carefully to make sure it contains one. And then we can act on that ourselves. Again, you want you want to be very careful here because you know you, you might have notifications elsewhere that's showing stuff. So unwrap things very very carefully. So first, you'll see uh, this is an array of NS of our dictionary. So NS object keys, any object values, but it's also optional. So we'll start by unwrapping that optional. So if let options equals launch options, then if let notification equals 
opera options ready ui application launch options local notification key so, and optionally typecast that as ui local notification that should that should work of course if it is if it actually exists uh, so we'll now know yes we've got a notification and it is one of those so we're, we're good to, to go then we look at the notification we'll see notification dot user info that's a dictionary again but it's also optional so we have to unwrap that again so we'll say if let user info equals notification dot user info so we unwrap that inside it then and only then do we know we've got a notification with user info set so we can start to pull out our data we can say let custom field one equals user info custom field one like that and I cast it as a string so I've pulled out that field which I named again name it anything you want it's down to you as long as it's useful to you and then you know do something awesome here whether that's you know show the email they requested or show the friend request or whatever happens to be you know what's best at this point that is the data you asked to show on the screen unlock and show it in more detail now because the user wants to see more information about it so that might occur this whole thing here might occur if your app was not running and the user asked to run it by unlocking the screen for one of your notifications the other option is if the app was already running and received the notification while it was running to do that you want to catch a new method which is not already in here actually by, def by default it's called application oops, application and then you want to look for did receive local notification so this will be called when your app is already running uh, and you can act on it now at this point we don't have to do the whole launch option notification unwrap thing because we know we've got a notification so we can just take this part of it the user info unwrap that conditionally and start working with it so, so copy and paste that code into your new did receive local notification method so it's going to check whether the notification has a user info uh, dictionary attached to it and conditionally unwrap it into user info then pull out the custom field one field and then you know do something cool with it i'm not really sure what you want to do so let's do um print learn uh, with a quote did receive local notification and i put in here the text we received which we want custom field one as string interpolation like that so it, that'll just oops, that'll just print out whatever we received I can try it out. We can run that back. Just so you know it's working. Uh, register. Actually, I might reset just to make sure we know exactly where we are. Reset. Reset. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Play it back. Register. Allow. And then schedule. I'm not going to press Command L to lock the screen. It will trigger while the app is running. And all being well. Boom. See in here. That's been called with the message woot. So we've pulled out the data we passed into it in the first place. And that's it. You're now able to go ahead and use local notifications in your app. It's that simple. And they're a wonderfully powerful, helpful, genuinely helpful feature for users when used correctly. Um, but make sure you do ask for permission first and don't use them too much. Otherwise, I can guarantee your app will be deleted probably by me. Uh, that's it. So the app's finished. For more information, go to the website, hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy this video and all the videos in this series in fantastic, glorious, wonderful, beautiful, high resolution. Or buy them as ebooks for just $3 a shot. Uh, the ebooks do contain lots more information. Uh, either way, your support does help me make more videos like this one, so it's very much appreciated. Finally, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. Uh, by all means, get in touch. If you have problems or questions, I'll do my very best to help you out.